Hey everyone, so I'm back with these easy embellishments. Let me know if we're good to go. Somehow my feed cut out. I don't know, I'm the only one using Wi-Fi and hopefully we'll get back on now. Let me know if you can see it. I'm gonna go ahead and click this in so we can just get going. So if you missed what I was doing, we were talking about making easy embellishments for cards like these on this one and I pulled out three of my favorite molds to use for cards the medallion a border and then the keyhole which I had a couple made ahead of time and what I'm filling this with is hot glue so I was gonna go ahead and fill one with hot glue so you want to use the largest um, glue gun you can kind of get. So this is what I have right here. Let me actually scoot the camera this way a little bit so I can get more of the glue gun in there. I got a short cord and um, the reason is it's just going to make it easier on you. You can use a little one. You're going to be pumping and refilling that constantly. So I'm just going to fill this one right here. This is the one I used on my card. Hey there! I got someone from Paris saying hi, so I had just had to say hi. Hello to everyone. Let us know where you're from. We love to find that out. There you go. Now my glue gun was pretty hot. You want to heat it up at least 10 minutes, and I like to turn it and, and make sure I don't have any dark shadows, which means I probably missed a spot. And no worries if you do. Um, if you miss a spot and you go, oh no, it looks terrible, there's a little trick to use. You just take, let, let me go ahead and like partially do one. And I'm gonna kinda do a sloppy job on this one on purpose. And um, I went, oh no. And I didn't notice until it was starting to set up. Here's what you do. You just go back in with your glue gun. I probably should let it set up a little bit. But um, I would go back in and fill the areas I missed and it may look pretty bad. All you have to do then is take your heat gun and flash that a little bit with some heat. And I just go towards it and then pull it away. I don't want my glue to bubble until it melts the whole thing evenly. I've gone back and saved a lot of my molded pieces that way. So that is what to do if you make a mistake and you don't see, especially if you're doing this late at night. Um, and then you're just gonna let it chill. Now these are chilled already, I did these earlier, and then you pop them out. And this is where the magic happens. Look at that. It's so cool. It really picks up the details from these IOD molds. Now you may have some strings and my first couple tries, they were a little yucky. You can cut off the extras with a scissors. These are bendable, they are flexible, and they're really durable when they're made with glue, the hot glue sticks. Nothing special, I just buy, I like the really long glue sticks because then I'm not refilling my glue gun constantly, but seriously, just silicone glue sticks. Um, and then you get these really lightweight, very inexpensive embellishments, okay? Beautiful. So I have a couple others I popped out. These were already painted. And there we go. There's a bunch of medallions. And I'm going to be careful and set this aside so that can chill. I also had these borders. Now, this is what I used on the one card right here. Okay. Okay. And it's not perfect, and I'm glad I didn't do a perfect job on this so I can show you. You can go in here and you can trim with a scissors. And I probably would go back, I gotta find out where my camera is, <laughs> and I, I could refill that little hole and add some a bit of heat on, from the heat gun, but it's pretty good. Now what I would do is take this to my card, measure it up, which is exactly what I did before. Okay, hold it on the edge so it's nice and flush. Flip it over and snip it to fit. There you go, and that way you can color the sides and make it look totally finished. How cool is that? 
So these are great. These border pieces are great for mini albums. You could put a frame together and miter the corners, which is really easy to do because you're just cutting them with a scissors. It's super flexible. Um, and I know we've done other shows before where we've used the paper clay and stuff and put these on. Well, let me show you. You can bend them around to like a clay pot or anything that's bendable. Think of any craft you do where you could bend these around. You want to paint them first and you can use different things, chalk paints, um, artisan powders and teak them beautifully. But today I'm going to show another way to color them. And then you would just glue those on with hot glue or a wood glue. Um, I also made embellishments for mixed media. And this is, it, it's really lightweight. It's super inexpensive. I have um, five different ones on here from the keyhole uh, mold, which is this one right here. And as I said, you can customize them. So, did you guys want to see, did we, did we already fill some glue molds? I feel like I've done this so many times now I forget where I am. Yeah, and we popped some out, right? We were making magic. I did want to kind of sneak this mold in because this is one of my favorites. It's a new flower one. Look at that. And you, you may have some, you know how hot glue is. You can trim those off. They snip off with your fingers pretty easily. But there's a flower basket and there's these little rose embellishments. How cute would these be for cards for ladies, right? Very lightweight too. All right. So let's go in and let's start coloring a couple of these. I'm going to go and pull out my coloring agent. So I'm going to focus just on the sparks today. These are Art Alchemy paints by Finn, and I've already colored one for each color, so I can flip through this really quickly. This is Mermaid Sparkle. That's a hot seller. And um, I, I really wish I had a before and after for every one of these. I made a ton of them. <laughs> so, um, but you can see, this is what it looks like before, and then this is what it looks like after. So this is Mermaid Sparkle. This one is uh, Fairy Wings. This one is great with St. Tropez. It's Magical Pond, and I use that as the base on this piece right here. You see the blue sticking out. Um, we have Ginger Magic. Now this one is more magical than I thought. It has a pink underbase to it, which is really cool. And then we have Dragon's Eye, very nice colors. This one is so girly. Butterfly Spells with one of the rose molds that I just popped out so I can show you. Here's before and here's after. You get amazing coverage with the sparks and that's just one coat. Then we have, I'm not a purple girl, but I'm in love with this one, Iris Potion. And then the base I covered with um, unicorn's hair. That's probably my favorite. It's, I, uh, uh, it's adorable. And then this one is Raven Black. And I think this is great for more masculine um, touches or more drama. And this is one of the bigger molds. But look at this piece right here. How fun is that? So I think we need to just color one so I can show you how quickly you can color. So I think I want to take... What do I want to take? What do you guys want to color? Maybe we'll do a medallion. I know that's white on white right now. Um, and I'm going to use unicorn's hair. And just don't get your brush very wet, of course, because that will thin out the paint, right? We're going to go in here, just cover all the sides and get down into those crevices because these molds are so detailed. And that's why I love the hot glue with them or the paper clay. Those two mediums really seem to draw the details and make them the highlight of the pieces. Okay, once I get to this last little bit, I don't want it all over my fingers. I'm just kind of dabbing it on, making sure I got a nice even coat. There we go. How does that look? You're going to let this dry for a couple minutes. And then you are ready 
to move to the next step. Are you guys ready to move to the next step or do you want me to paint another one? I think you got it. You know how to paint? Okay. What I'm going to do is set that one aside but pull out some of these others that were already colored. Look at these. And we're going to have fun. We're moving along really quickly today, right? It's my goal. I have so much I want to share that I always talk forever. <laughs> and today, I'm going full speed ahead. All right. This is, so number one step was the wax and the molds. Number two step was painting them. So here's one painted. And this is a little time piece. I didn't get to show you all the molds, but there are um, there are a lot of them. And this one is amazing because it has that cute little clock piece in, which is right here. I did this right before the show. Look at that. It's like magic. And I use these little pieces right here on the card. I like to show you visually what I used. Um, and then put a medallion in between so you can make it to fit the width of your card. Um, and this one has a border too. So you, this one kind of has everything you need for a guy's card right there. So that's another one you should get. And I'm going to keep going with cards you should get or molds you should get because they're, you need them all. I need them all. There's some I don't have. All right, so we have these all painted, and now what we're going to do is pull out some of these waxes. And if you haven't played with the waxes yet, um, buckle up. These are the metal waxes, and um, they're all different colors. They're metals. So my favorite, rich copper. Okay, this one's pretty bold, but it's warm. It has a beautiful, beautiful color. Um... Which one do I want to do copper on? Let's do this one. And I just put a little bit on my finger. You can use a brush, of course, or a little sponge. And um, I'm just catching the highlights. Those details of the mold are going to pop once you get this on. Do you see that? So that's copper. But I wouldn't stop with just one. I would pick another color. Which one do you guys want to see? Oh, bronze. Bronze is my second favorite, I think. <laughs> Look at that. It's gorgeous. And when you mix this together, um, it, it's a darker brown. But I like it mixed with the copper because it puts a little bit of drama in. But I don't want to cover up all my copper because the copper puts a little bit of spark in because it's got that red tone. And... Um, you could blend these, of course, and you can keep layering if you want, but look at that. I want to show you one that I have done. I think it's this one. I have a bunch of finished ones, and these all have different wax finishes on them. I'm just going to pull the whole tray out. These are all different paints and all different waxes, and I would suggest one color of paint and then two colors of wax just to get that layering dimension in there. Let's try a couple more, right? You want to see them? People ask about the silvers. So let me pull that out. There's brushed iron, and this is a darker silver. Um, and then there's the old silver, which is, I think, a lighter silver. See them next to each other? So old silver is lighter, and then um, brushed iron is a little bit darker. And I'm going to go in, I think with my little flower. Now I'm going on a darker color so it's going to be a bit more subtle but sometimes you don't want the loud the loud um, colors. You want it to be a bit softer and what that did is it pulled out the rose design and those are now silverish. But I wouldn't stop there. I would pick another one. What do you think Carrie? Rose gold? No, no, I, I think vintage gold. And I know, I'm mixing silver and gold here. Probably a faux pas, but we're okay with that. We're just playing, and that's the thing. If I mess this up, it costs me about, um, I'm thinking five cents. There you go. And I mix silver and gold. 
What do you guys think? Okay, I really wanted to use all of these. Let me just show you rose gold. It's really popular. It's one of our best sellers. And I think that looks, I'm wiping my fingers off in between. This is a leaf I did. This is just the wax with just the paint. And this has rose gold on it. So when I told you that unicorn hair was my favorite because I think it pairs with rose gold the best. That's just my personal opinion. I love this color. Let's try it on maybe the watch piece, which I said could be really masculine, but I'm making it a little girly here. Oh my gosh. It's really a sweet, soft effect. Look at that. I don't know if you can catch that on camera, but yeah, it's beautiful. Now these waxes, what happens once you rub them on? Um, they set up within a couple of hours and they will not rub off. So they seal once they're on there. Okay. So you put them on and just ignore, let it set and let it dry. Um, I want to go really quickly through another set of waxes. The metal leak, you kind of need all of them. I'm just saying. The other ones I think are brilliant for this. You'll see a pun here soon. Our antique brilliance. <laughs> okay, so these are really fun. Um, let's pick Amethyst Magic. Now these have two tones inside. And you'll see, a, if you see a darker color, it's the antique base, which is a darker brown. But then it's mixed with amethyst. And I'm taking it on this one. These are a bit bolder. And they have that antique look already so you kind of get a two-toned effect with them now I'm being really sloppy you would be much neater with this and you only want a little bit so you don't get um, globs of this on and it's gonna just catch the highlights and if you used a brush you could get it down into the grooves and do the opposite I'm using my finger to catch the highlights but you could easily take it and um, get those crevices. Let me take Fire Ruby. Now Ruby and Red Amber sound alike. Um, whoops, I knew that was gonna happen when I tried to put two in my hand. Um, Red Amber is definitely more of a copper and Fire Ruby is definitely more of a red. But you need both. So I'm just saying, they're so fun. Um, I just get this on my fingers. Now this one is going to be a really intense, like a copper effect. And that's why I think I like this one so much. There it is on the green, but let me try the copper on this one right here. Which reminds me of a little boat steering wheel, which is why I used it on my, my St. Tropez card, because I thought it was... Kind of fitting for that seashore theme. There I, I, I caught all the major highlights of that um, design and it's really popped. And what I would do is mix this with a bronze so that you get this um, coppery effect but the darker tones too. Okay? All right. Let's play just a little bit more. Do you guys like these antique brilliance? Oh my gosh, they're so beautiful. Look at this. It's really, really pretty. Okay, I gotta do one more. And I'm just mixing colors here that may not work the best. But they're the ones I have painted already. So this is turquoise going on the rose. We'll have to see what I create at the end of it. You know when you're doing live sometimes? <laughs> Hey, it's kind of cool. It really muted it. It made it much more of a vintage tone. Oh, how fun. It's really cool looking. Okay, so let me show you. There's one more set of waxes, and I'm going to be really fast with them. They're Opal Magic, and just like the name suggests, they are lighter, and they, they have an inference in them. I'm going to pull out the turquoise. Um, on light colors, you're just going to get a really light, light, light wax effect. 
but when you put it on a darker color it pulls out a touch of the color that is in there so that kind of like an opal effect so this one is the turquoise I'm wondering if you can see that okay it's subtle but it is there for sure and I'm gonna do a different one let me do green on the other side or I should do purple let me do purple because I have another one where I did green and I'll show you that right after so this one is called I'm losing my label royal robes oh my gosh so you got to get the raven black for sure because then you can use all these opal magic and get this effect it's still dark but it looks so cool here's another one I did and this one was painted I think with um, the dragon's eye and I used one of the greens on here and I think one of the I actually think these are an, the antique brilliance. I'm trying to remember. I made so I've made hundreds and hundreds of these, so to remember what I did on each one. But let me show you something really cool on some of these larger ones. These book plates. These work so well, like say on mini albums. Um, you can take them, and these have that little hole in them. So how cute would this be with say? A butterfly on your spine of your mini album how cute is that and I also had a book plate let me find that real quickly here's a book plate oh well we need to wax this don't we let me bronze it up just a little bit because it just doesn't look finished to me yet when it's sitting here with just paint and not two-toned or three-toned now these you could put alphabets on of course but I think it looks beautiful with a metallic accent. How pretty is that? Look at, oh my gosh, I love these. They're my favorite thing to create right now. Well, let's just pop that butterfly over to here. Look at that. Or we could put a metal rose on. What else could we do with these? You guys, I know you have tons and tons of ideas. I just have a couple accents out here. But you could also layer, you could put the, a medallion on the top of that or or a different piece. All right, these colors don't match at all. Carrie's gone, she's going nuts now. <laughs> I like that there and I like that there and I like this one here. All right, so I know I went really quickly. The main thing was the molds. Use them with hot glue and then pop them out and then we're gonna paint them with sparks so you got your glue, you got your spark, and then you're going to add your wax on. So it's, it's as simple as one, two, and three. And then you end up with these beautiful embellishments that you can put. They're perfect for cards because they are very, very lightweight. They're very durable. and um, But they they can work on anything, really. Look at that. So, any questions? I kind of missed the whole chat because I was so busy creating. But if you missed me at the beginning, all I did was take a hot glue gun. I'm going to scoot this stuff over. I took a hot glue gun into the molds like this and just filled it. And it, it literally takes about 30 seconds to fill this. You don't have to be super neat. You just want to make sure it is full and you didn't miss areas. And then it chills. And when it's ready, I turn it just to make sure I don't have any little holes or gaps. And it takes a couple minutes to cool off. And when that hot glue is cooled off, you simply pop them out and you get this. All right, so these are IOD molds, and then we used Finn's um, spark paints, and then we used Finn's 
waxes. So these three items, pair them with your St. Tropez papers and make some Father's Day cards. Get these out and play. You are gonna love them. You can use this stuff over and over and over and make embellishments that literally cost pennies a piece. All right, thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you learned a few tips and tricks and I know you guys have stuff you could share with me and we would love to hear from you. We'd love to see your projects um, using Prima. Just share on our social media. All right, thanks so much. We'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye. Here's a little close-up. While I got my camera and I have to save it. <laughs> thanks, guys.